Hey everyone, Srini here from NotionEssentials.com and today I want to talk about how I use Notion to write blog posts and we're going to go over four key concepts. But before we get into the how, I want to talk about why. I think the thing that makes Notion a really, really valuable tool for writing blog posts is the fact that it is distraction-free. The moment you start typing, the interface goes away. So, you know, if you've ever worked in Notion, you'll see that the navigation goes away. So you have no visual distractions, which is incredibly important, particularly if you want to get into a flow state, which is really the source of a lot of creative breakthroughs for writers. Stephen Kotler, who's really the expert on flow science, says that people are 500% more productive in a state of flow. And if you think of it in terms of writing, let's say that normally it takes you a hour or so to write a thousand words. Well, in flow, you could write that same thousand words in 15 minutes. And not only will you write the thousand words, they'll actually be better than the thousand words that you wrote before. It's something that I experience almost daily when I find myself getting into flow, that the last six to seven paragraphs go way faster than the first two, but there's a sort of struggle. And the thing is that anything that distracts you basically pulls you right out of the possibility of even accomplishing flow. So that's really the why behind using Notion for blog posts. But I wanna go through the writing process that I use to compose blog posts. So. One of the big ideas behind how I do this is free writing. And this is a concept that I learned from uh, a guy named Julian Smith, who is the founder of a startup called Breather. But before starting Breather, he had one of the most popular blogs on the internet. And he turned me on to this idea of writing a thousand words a day. And one of the reasons a thousand words a day works really well is because it's a clear goal you have a number, so you just know whether you hit the goal or not. Now, the actual number doesn't matter as much as, as going through and doing it consistently, but I've found that a thousand is just the right amount to get you into flow and also to provide you with a lot of material. And the reason we call it free writing is because that's precisely what it is. You're not really trying to necessarily force it an idea, you just write whatever comes to your mind, um, and some of it will actually be bad. You know, I always say that 90% of everything that I write is complete crap, and the 10% that's not is the, the part that I risk sharing with my audience. But the thing is, when you're doing it so much, you actually end up having a lot of ideas, so not all of it has to be good. It, in fact, frees you from the pressure to you know, write some great American novel every time you sit down to write. So that's a big part of it, is the combination of the fact that you have a very clear goal, which also is one of the things that Stephen Kotler says is a flow trigger. Um, you're able to sort of express yourself freely without sort of the pressure of trying to meet some expectation of an audience. And it just ends up being this process that leads to a lot more flow. Now, the other part of this that is critically important is capturing ideas. Now. The funny thing is nobody actually has a shortage of ideas. You have ideas all day long, dozens of them. But the problem is that we don't remember most of our ideas because we don't have some sort of mechanism for capturing them. So anytime I have a, an idea for a blog post, I actually go into the editorial, editorial calendar and you'll see here that I actually have these you know, filtered by status. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the filter, remove work in progress, and um, we're gonna go ahead and only have stuff where the status is an idea. And what you'll see here in a second is that there are dozens of ideas, many of which are not fully formed. And the thing is, some of them I've, I've done you know, a little bit of work on, some of them I've done no work on. And basically, I just put ideas in there, whether they're fully formed or not, because Every idea you have, particularly when it comes to writing, needs what's called an incubation period, uh, a period in which you're trying to figure out what is going to go into this. So here's a, a perfect example. So right now I'm writing a blog post about how to build a system to maximize your creative output. Uh, it's almost done. But the funny thing is I actually started with you know this idea right here, which you can see is kind of half-baked, and now it's evolved into this idea, which has about... 6,000 words, you know, you can see it's much more well thought out. So there's a lot of value in capturing your ideas, even if you don't know exactly how you're going to bring them to life. So that's a critically important part of this. So let me get back to where we were before. And the thing is that when you do that, 
like I said, you don't have to know whether the idea is going to work right away or not. Now, one of the places where a lot of people get stuck is they might have an idea and then they don't know what to do with it. Um, they're just kind of you know, thinking, oh, this is a great idea, but I'm not sure what to say next. So I want to share a concept with you that I learned from my friend Tiago Forte uh, at Building a Second Brain called Archipelago of Ideas. And if you sign up for the paid version of his blog, he actually has a really, really detailed tutorial about how to do this. But I created my own version of this inside of Notion. So what you can see here is I have this template for a new blog post. And we're going to go ahead and pull that up. You can see here I already have the title. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create what he Tiago refers to as an archipelago of ideas. Now, what's interesting about this is that it prevents you from starting with a blank page. You're just able to jot down every single thought that you have uh, about uh, a particular idea or a particular you know theme that you want to write about. So maybe what we could do, for example, let's just say that you know you want to write about new habits. You know. And you can link them to different things. You can use the sources. Um, what do we want to know about new habits? How long do they take to form? Why do we struggle? And so on. You get the idea. Um, but the funny thing is that the more that you do this, the more you're going to have to work with when you actually start to build out your idea. Now, the great thing about this is that, again, like I said, you're not starting from scratch you basically are able to link ideas and build bridges, as Tiago likes to point out. And this is really why he calls it the archipelago of ideas. Because you know ideas are like islands, and you're basically trying to connect the dots between all of them. So you'll see here, this kind of mirrors the structure of a typical blog post, where you'll see sort of a big header, you know, subheaders, and all of that. And it's something that I use to write almost every blog post that I write. So let me go back and actually show you an example where I've done this. Okay, so in this case, I don't have it, but there's another one where, you know, we we did this. So I started writing this guide to creative confidence. Okay, yet another one where I don't have this, but um, oh, actually, I know where this one. So there's another post here about the psychology of building an audience. Now, a lot of things go into you know building an audience, and you can see here that um, I've used this archipelago of ideas concept to really kind of flush out this post and the core concepts in it, and as a result, rather than starting from scratch, I kind of have the subheaders. I kind of have you know pretty much everything I need. Obviously, there's a lot of work to be done here because this is a blog post that's in progress. But you can see here how just having you know sort of this map prevents you from having writer's block. So that's a big part of this. And then the final part of this that of course is is really important is editing and revisions. So. One of the things that James Clear, who has one of the most popular blogs and a uh, you know best-selling book that sold over a million copies, said is that he spends probably more time editing than he does writing. And editing is one of those things that we like the idea of just saying, okay, I'm going to edit once and then that's it, I'm done. Now, there's obviously sort of a fine line between procrastination um, and good planning. But the thing that I love about Notion is that you can have you know feedback come in from other people. I have a proofreader who I work with, as you can see, who goes through and she proofreads all of the content. Uh, but a big part of editing is really going back and, and looking at you know what you've written in, and really more often than not, actually removing things rather than adding them. In fact, I have a, a section of this post in particular that is about editing, and it's something that you know Greg McEwen, uh, who wrote the book Essentialism, says. And he says that you know um, it's not just saying no to things, but really deliberately subtracting the things that go into a particular blog post. Now this is a really long blog post because it's a, a you know piece about how to design a system to maximize your creative output, and there's a lot involved here. So in a nutshell, that is how I use Notion to create blog posts. Uh, it's been instrumental in everything I do. And if you have any questions about how to use Notion to write blog posts, or for that matter, how to do anything else, just leave them in the comments below. And you can learn more about what I do at notionessentials.com.